So welcome to another round of uh, generative civics. Um, so this is a really fun one because today we're gonna come together and actually select out of the projects that have applied. So 29 in total, 30 actually, if Frequency Village wants to put his hand into the ring today, um, that we can distribute points out to. Only 16 of those made the deadline for making a video. So those are probably the ones that most of you are most familiar with. Um, and what we're actually gonna do is go over a process today of being able to select those 12. And Roberto from Liminal Village actually helped put together the Big Rocks method that we'll be using today. So what I want to do to start off today is actually pass it to Roberto and he can give a little bit of an overview of what he's done and I could add some color to that before we get started. Uh, thank you. So uh, I don't know if I should show uh, the, the tool itself so that we can actually, I can speak into it. Definitely, and share the tool in the chat so everyone else can open it up and we can get started yeah. on it too. I'll share the tool in the chat. You can just bring it up. Okay, let me know when you can see it. Thumbs up, can you see it? We can, yep. Yep. All right, cool. Nice. So this is the tool. You get the link. Um, it's a fork from uh, that demonstration from the um, uh, Big Rock process. There is a short explanation on instead of $100 now, we just put it to 1,000 points because it's just much easier to actually get a little bit more fine grain. And uh, I made, um, so here's a list of projects. This is the one that I found into the, um, the submission form. Um, some of them are not in the wiki. Some of them, there are videos. So I just put some notes here. I just found some, some just in Discord or some just with a video. So I think some, um, so it's a little bit all over the place, but, uh, I don't know which one you should be scoring, if we should be scoring all anyway, or, uh, but I just put them here as a reference. So you could choose to spend your thousand points into each one of these. You can choose to, to, to just spend it in three of them or all of them, it's up to you. And um, what's very important here is that you need to log in into this and just select what you represent. So why is that? Is that so that every submitted project or every present project or every alliance um, gets this thousand votes only once, otherwise it wouldn't be fair. So what you can do is select your project or your alliance. And if you're logged in, you are able to select them here, your avatar. And uh, what, what will happen, you can see later on, down here, down here we have uh, the requirements for the project to apply, uh, this you know. Um, here's the scoring with all the 16 first videos that have been submitted. Um, with, when you do score, you should have consideration for the following aspects. Um, of course, you don't have to score each one of them. The score is only once, so it's more of a gut feeling at some point of what are, of all of these um, these different aspects. There is no waiting for each of the aspects or so on. It's about you deciding. And uh, in order to join the scoring, you have to click this button. So join the voting. As you see, right now is disabled. Why? Because I haven't selected me or, uh, or as a um as a representative so you can just go to the previous step or click here and it brings you back up where you need to put your name into one of the um yeah the project or alliance and uh if your project is missing just you can just go, go down here and uh, just add your name down here uh, if you're an alliance also that is missing one person, one member per alliance should be, um, yeah, should be added. 
So uh, I'm going to give an example now with uh, Laura's account because I already signed up, so I cannot actually show you. Um, so if I put this on, okay, now I am as a representative for Liminal Village. And as we go down here, you see down the bottom is green. So you can click it, join the voting. And uh, in its time, it's gonna take some time because my computer is all of a sudden very slow, but uh, it will fill up all of the um, projects and the alliances, also the alliances here in this table. So here's one I made earlier. So it's we here. <laughs> it should be much faster than this. That's probably because I'm uh, uh, streaming. Asking how does this apply to me? How does this apply to my life? What should I be taking out of watching this on stage? Sorry, if you didn't catch that. Okay, this question. I heard it, so let me repeat it. She said, how does this apply to my life? What should I be taking from this? Uh, quick response is this is the tool that we're using today to actually um, select the 12 projects. So everyone here watching, you could be going through this process um, and setting up your profile here so you can participate in voting today. Um, anyone watching this recording, then this is the process for you using this tool and getting set up. Sorry, I, th I don't know if that was clear enough. And if people have just joined, that's also what we're doing here. So we're actually going through the process of picking the 12 projects using this tool to do so. Roberto is showing how it works. So now here is the after you join the voting, here is basically your avatar and uh, each of the projects down here. So here you can score the project. So you just move this bar. Okay, let's say 180 votes. So you would see that this automatically updates with 180 available and uh, um, it will do it. <laughs> and uh, Mm -hmm. So that was, you also see that this actually re-ranks re itself here as calculating. I don't know why it's so slow right now, maybe because we're all on the document. Okay, you see, okay, 175, and then sh shortly it will be updated. But in practice, if you go over a thousand, everything will become red. So in the moment that, uh, th then you need to adjust your voting. Um, as I say, this is, uh, you can only see right now your own voting. So you cannot see the voting of other people. That's actually what's gonna happen in the last session here. Only after we have voted, we can review the result and see who come up on top. And um, yeah, that, that might be the list of the, uh, the project that uh, are passing. So I think one thing to add to this is like, okay, you are not allowed and you actually won't be able to allow to, to vote for your own project. So you won't be able to find your own project here. And that's, I think it's fair. Uh, otherwise everybody's just voting for his own. <laughs> uh, but, but the idea of this tool is in, to use it in this way is that the projects that are actually participating are able to kind of choose with whom they want to be together in the um, in the cohort. So I think, if there are any questions, um, I have a question. So uh, when you're evaluating the projects based on, you know, I think those were mostly suggestions, but the idea of, you know, whether it's financed well, whether it's other contract, whatever. Where do we get that information from? Is it in the videos? Right, so up here. Um, there is a link. So here's the video, 16 videos, and there's the wiki. Um, potentially, maybe the best way would be directly on the Discord, I guess, or on 
some projects are only on the Discord, some projects are only on the wiki, some projects are uh, only on the on the videos. So yeah, maybe I can uh, reply to that. Um, sure. Um, this is the first season and it's a little bit messy. So that information is all over the place. And I think that's also going to inform the voting too, uh, because some projects are more vocal and you know, speaking to all of these points as well. Um, so not every project brought that information. So I, I imagine that would inform the selection process as well. Um, but currently this is an emergence. We're just kind of figuring that as we're going <laughs> and we're learning a lot and learning fast. Um, so this is season one. It was a little bit clunky. Um, season two, I think we're gonna have a clearer place to be able to find this information and sort through it easier. Um, I think that's gonna take some time though. That's my response to it, but anyone can speak to that. Would season two be, or is there an opportunity or when is the right opportunity to um, invite somebody or what's the process? Like I have a lot of questions about this. Um, what's the process for um, in, inviting somebody to participate? Because I know somebody who's creating a regenerative village and has been doing it for like years and has land and whatever. Is it possible to have that project considered? Um, not for season one, for season two, yes. And each season is going to be after the previous season finishes. So we're not sure how long that is because this is the first season. Um, so it might be, you know, six months, maybe a year. Um, but for consideration for today's session, I can speak to all the next steps as far as I understand them after we go through this selection process and maybe they'll bring some clarity to everyone. Um, but first let's focus kind of questions on the selection process, getting people filled out in this forum and we can exercise this. Um, one thing I did want to ask this group here, uh, at one point we had talked about only people who attend this call would be able to participate in the selection process. However, many people have reached out and said they couldn't attend the call for one reason or another, and they're saying, is it possible for us to have one week period where people who didn't attend uh, could watch the video, come participate in this process, and then one week from now we would know the results rather than today? Um, so there's two timelines for us right now, and I'd like the people who are here on this call, you get the governance over this. So we can use the heart emoji if you want to just do it today. If you've attended this call, only you participate and we know the results today. Or use the thumbs up emoji if you want to be able to wait a week and give people who weren't able to attend today the option to be able to vote. So go ahead and express yourselves and I will... Um, yeah, there you go. Don't share the screen. We can see everyone. All right, throw up whatever emoji feels right for you. Again, thumbs up. We wait a week. Heart, we do it today. I think there was also something said about this being over two meetings on the 17th and the 24th, this process happening at a previous meeting two or three weeks ago. So um, that's in the field. Agreed. And also there, there's like, for example, with Finca Sagrada, there's what, five of us. Um, it would be really nice to take some time and to sit maybe after this call and to, you know, talk about it so that we're not on the spot. Uh, Cause you know, only we get one vote for the collective. <clears throat> I'm seeing a lot of thumbs up. Does anyone else have anything they want to bring to the space, either for reasons why they feel real strong to do it today or real strong to wait a week? Anything else to help inform our process today? Okay, well, I'm seeing a whole bunch of thumbs up. So that says wait a week. And I think that meets everyone's needs uh, the most possible. So that means we have a week to actually, you know, consider our ideas, change our scores around and submit the vote. And then next week we'll get on a call like this again. We can answer any questions in case there is any confusion about how this tool worked or for whatever reason it didn't work for you. Uh, we can make sure we get all the votes in. We can do a similar session as we do today and then we'll know the results. We like that. Anyone opposed to that plan going forward or want to block it? I just, uh, I just have a- uh, Go for it, John. <clears throat> to make sure that the uh, overall voting stays hidden um, and or if it can't, that can't be done, that we all agree on our honor not to look at the overall results um, until next call. John has a proposal for you to shield your eyes from the truth. <laughs> um, that it's it's up to you, I would say, that's already built in. If you don't submit, 
then you're going to be secret. If you don't mind people seeing your signal and how your signal is being displayed in advance, then go ahead and submit your vote. Um, but you can wait all week to submit your vote or not. And that way we don't have to change tools or, you know, expect everyone to play a similar game. That's my counter proposal. Does that work, John? Yeah, that works. As long, as long as people aren't able to see before they actually cast their votes, I think that's fine. Um, maybe I could pass it back over to Roberto if he has any more questions on the tool. And you can also respond to John if that's even possible to just hide the results for now until next week. Yeah, so there is the last session. If you open it up, you will be able to see something. Um, maybe we could do that everybody makes the vote on a piece of paper and then next week we gather and we all bring it together. There is a way to hide the the table, but then I'm not sure. I'm I'm not, I'm just fiddle with the tool, so I'm not really sure if it actually is going to save them. There's a play mode that then you're not able to edit anything, and then um, maybe it's possible. So maybe I I will need to I will need to dig down and see if I can hide it basically. So maybe the easiest way would be for us to gather next week and do the voting together, uh, or just promise that we won't watch and uh, trust that. I also like the trust uh, approach. <laughs> so I can, uh, there go over, I can go over the tool a little bit more so that we all understand how this works. So one more time, just to recap what Roberto went over. First, either find your village here and then sign up as a representative. After you've signed up, your name will show here. Or if you're an alliance, that means you're an organization that's helping these 12 projects, you can start adding your alliance down here and then add you as a representative to it, like we see with these alliance organizations. Now this is required and this also means that every alliance and project has one vote. So if there's multiple of you from your project, say there's five of you, then only one of you is gonna be the representative and then you're gonna cast a vote for that whole project or alliance. So every project and alliance gets one vote. Um, that answers your question, Stephen, because if you're not part of, okay, you guys all get that. Um, we'll come down here, submission scoring. So then after you've been, Add it to that, then you can join the voting. When you click this button, it's gonna pull up all the projects and then you're able to start casting your points. So it's also probably good that we gave a week time because this is probably gonna take some time to you know, tweak this around and find our best tweaking however we want. And then as Roboto pointed out, if you go up too many points, the whole thing is gonna go red and you know you've went over. So then you can start tweaking them down. The whole concept here is this is us exercising collective intelligence. So if we're all coming at this and saying, okay, here's what we're considering, let's try to distribute our points. And it's very flexible, as you see, you've got a thousand points, you can distribute them any way you want. You know, you can give 900 points to one project and then five to the rest, if that's what you'd like. You know, it's entirely up to you how you wanna distribute your points um, and what you wanna see um, happen here. So this is, we're probably gonna learn a lot about how this governance process works. And this is also something we're being mindful of as we go through this process, is we can tweak the governance that we're you know, participating in. If these tools aren't working for us for whatever reason, let's make sure we change the tools for season two, you know, et cetera. So this is also us you know, using the tools and being aware of, are they actually helping us make good decisions? So a final summary here then. What is the point of all this? We're picking 12 projects from the 29. Why do we have to pick 12 rather than let all of them join? It's so we can have a smaller cohort. We can have more voices actually represented and we can have more manageable calls and discussions moving forward. Um, all right, I think that's kind of everything I wanted to share pre-tool. Um, the only other thing I have to share today is to close today's call. I'll go over kind of some next steps and you know what to look forward to. So I will pause there if there's any questions, thoughts, or if anyone has anything else they want to bring to today. Nice to meet you, everyone. <laughs> yeah, so exciting. This is an amazing process. Thank you.
So there are, and I know, I feel like I'm the only person asking questions, so maybe everybody else knows what they're doing, but um, uh, there are people on here. I just noticed uh, somebody's message. Is it, oh, I've lost it now, but there was somebody, oh yeah, William Blake. Blakey um, says that he's been here to answer questions about uh, Starseed Village. So um, there are people on this call who are obviously proponents and, and sponsors of villages. Are there ways to use the group to find out more information, I guess? I'm worried that I'll be trying to make this evaluation and be as, um, you know, be as responsible as I can be, but the information available just won't be enough to actually make a determination about which ones are best suited to go forward or not. So are there other ways that we can, beyond sort of scraping the internet and going to Wiki and whatever, are there other ways that we could connect with people to, to find out answers to these questions? Um, I'm gonna answer your question with a proposal. So we were meant to have two sessions and we did actually have them in smaller order um, of projects coming together and doing Q and A's. However, since I recently had a baby and I wasn't hosting those calls, there's a bunch of disruption because people thought it would be in the Zoom link and it wasn't and it didn't really work out. So my proposal is we could spend the remainder of today's session actually doing that Q&A with projects and talking about it and helping us inform our decision making and then go about actually doing the vote throughout the week. So it's a little bit shifting what we are going to do instead of just voting today. Now today is that Q&A session that we were meant to really have. <laughs> And then we vote throughout the week and we gather next week and we know the results. Um, so that's a route that we can go today. Is anyone, oh, how do we feel about that? You know, thumbs up if you really like that, you know, thumbs sideways if you think there's something else we should be doing today. Cool, then we can, we can switch into that. Um, so there's two different ways we can go about doing this. I think each project could just have a moment, maybe actually just two minutes. Um, to respond to anything if you want. So if you're a project representative here, feel free to put your hand up and we can give you a few moments to say something about your project and help people know a little bit more about you, any questions you think you might've missed. Uh, simultaneously, if you're representing an alliance, then put your hand up and then you can ask questions to you know, a project specifically, or you can say, hey, you know, we're really interested in X, Y, Z, you know, what projects wanna respond to that? So maybe you're an organization interested in funding um, planting a whole bunch of trees, then your question would be what projects are really focused on planting trees to give a, a an idea. So, anyway, that's well, very simple. So put your hands up. I can call you in turn and we can just have an open session. So Walter, are you representing the Finca Sagrada on this call? Oh, you're on, you're on mute, Walter. Maybe you two can figure that out in chat and private yeah. message. <laughs> okay. And then before that, so anyone project that wants to speak to the group, please put your hand up. Um, and anyone who has questions for projects, put your hand up. So I'll just start calling people in turn. Put your hand up when you're ready. Uh, Kelly and Joe, Abundancia and Ubuntu. Take it away. Hey, everybody. You want to start, sweetheart? No, you go ahead. All right. Hey, guys. We're Abundancia and Ubuntu. Um, some of you have known us from these calls. We've been traveling around Costa Rica searching for the perfect land to buy and then synchronicity, synchronicity Italy, whatever. Um, we manifested a land partner on 5,000 acres in southwestern Nicaragua, uh, have proceeded to fall in love with him and him with our vision. Uh, well, it's all about visions, right? And uh, so, yeah, we're, we're set up to move there in two weeks and stay there for two months uh, in a master planning process. Um, which is super exciting. We're in the process of raising about $3 million, have investors already lined up. Um, you want to tell a little about the vision, what we're doing there? Sure. So yeah, we really wanted to have somewhere where we can implement the full vision. And so that's why we were looking for somewhere that's a larger amount of acreage so that there's going to be regenerative agriculture, agroforestry, reforestation, regenerative aquaculture, because it's right there on the beach uh, where they're doing overfishing currently. So we're actually going to implement regenerative aquaculture to help eliminate that uh, issue. And then um, many other things, of course, sustainable building methods. We were really doing more uh, along the lines of the living building challenge certification. If anybody knows about that, it's like the top regenerative uh, certification for building and of course permaculture and, and the true vision of Abundantia is really to liberate residents of, of survival needs so we can really focus on creation and innovation. So we're gonna be giving 
free food, free water, free utilities, no HOA fees, and all free community amenities to everybody who lives there to really showcase this model of how would it look like if we can actually be living in the way that we are truly aligned with our soul mission and just create and live our purpose and go to the education centers and research centers and um all those sorts of i'll just throw in one last uh faq it's about 300 to 400 total homes on the project I'm curious about the scope um southwestern nicaragua an hour from the costa rican border right on the ocean it's really beautiful one of the best surf destinations in the area so if anybody has any questions happy to answer them as long as we have Yeah, stepping in, interim facilitator, I do think we can do maybe two questions if anyone has them from you. And if you have it, just unmute yourself and ask them. <clears throat> and yes, we are in love. Engaged. Uh, and planning to have our wedding at the land next year. Awesome. You guys are incredible. Um, thank you so much. And we'll pass it over to Charlie from Salt Cross. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. Hello. Um, the project that we're talking about is Salt Cross Garden Village, just outside of Oxford in England. It's a small village, existing village called Ensham, uh, which is about 5,000 people that will be doubled across the next 10 years as a, one of the 37 community uh, garden villages uh, across the UK starts to appear. Um, it's led by one of the um, oldest uh, and largest, richest landowners in the country. So it's a very different proposition to some of the others here, um, I think, uh, from what I've seen of the others. Um, but it represents what I think is a, is a bit more of a, a mainstream of some of the patterns that come from eco villages. So the fantastic stuff that's been going on for decades um, brought back into people that would be um, usually not really be aware of um, eco villages or how to get involved in one um, and would ordinarily buy a new house within uh, these new properties that maybe is like a red brick house with uh, two car parking spaces, lots of asphalt. And this is an opportunity for ownership and, and governance, novel forms of both of those within a community land trust mechanism that allows um, some of these eco-village patterns that are coming out around re regenerative practices to start to roll through across the next 10 years. And I think this ownership and governance piece is is really the important one. Um, it's uh, 154 hectares. It will be 2,200 homes. And we've been working for the last three years with the local community as community land trust technical advisors to um, put forward a vision for something that's an alternative. There's a real desire from the developer and from the policy that wraps around this site for a community land trust. They'll have to deliver a community land trust in some form. And we want the best for for what this site could offer. Um, at the very least, it will be three clusters of self-built homes, 105 homes in three parts of the neighborhood. At the very most, it will be full ownership across the next 10 years in phases into a community land trust um, so that the assets on site can, can really fuel um, really rich placemaking across this period and into the future. And so it's quite an ambitious scheme. It's, it will be the biggest community land trust in the country, in, in England, if it goes ahead. And uh, we fought hard to get this into planning policy. Uh, that's such a small piece, but it's such an important piece at the very beginning. And we achieved that two years ago. Uh, it got approved by the planning inspectorate in the UK. And now we're at the stage of like, how do we actually make this thing happen when we're talking about a 750 million pound project? Um, of which the assets will require what we think is a, a 500 million endowment sat on top of that. So we've done, sorry, a 5 million endowment um, in order to run this um, trust. And so we've done the numbers, we've worked out what it would take to, to run an estate like this. And we think that uh, some of the, the techniques that uh, a participant in SEED's ecosystem and wider can really help to feel great in inclusive and interactive participation. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Thanks. Ugh, I'm so in love with all the projects here. You guys are incredible. Um, any questions for Charlie on the Salt Cross project? Easy, awesome. Thanks, Charlie.
Um, and just, I had the inclination to do the presentation for what's the next steps um, for what we're doing as an alliance. But just keep that in mind that will end up, that'll happen at the end of this session where we'll go over what's actually part of the alliance, what to expect as a project as we participate in this, um, at least as far as I see it now. But anyway, thank you, Charlie. And I will pass it now to Tucker from Tioga. Thank you guys. <clears throat> My name is Tucker from the Tioga community. And uh, we are working on a very interesting uh, model. We've identified that there are a lot of elderly uh, generational landowners here in the United States that are currently being faced with the decision of uh, selling their land just so they can afford to retire. And so we have created a model using community land trusts uh, to allow those landowners to uh, get their equity out while still granting the land into a community land trust that then becomes a hub for what we're calling a one small town movement. And if you're familiar with Michael Tellinger and Ubuntu and his book, uh, you'll know what I'm talking about. And it's we're, we're trying to basically get an entire town to come together and pool resources together to uh, live more regeneratively and more supportively, uh, so both socially and economically. Uh, we are currently situated on a 110 acre sheep farm in Wanalancet slash Tamworth, New Hampshire, which is like this incredible like unicorn valley here where like everybody is just like fully in line with what we are trying to do. And uh, we want to use this as a template that can be replicated all over the United States. And so I got here about two weeks ago and we are currently in the process of figuring out the contracts and the vision that the current landowner has to then put that into a community land trust that will follow that, you know, that legacy vision while still like, you know, bringing the entire community together to live a better way. And uh, so I'm, I'm happy to answer any questions that you might have. Uh, but really, we're going for a replicatable model that could be done in any town in the United States. And I think that has a lot of value to this cohort. I agree. <laughs> cool. um, any questions for Tucker and Tioga community? Again, if you do, just unmute yourself and you're to ask. Okay, thank you, Tucker. Um, next up is Stefan Gnomes from Think of Sagrada. Thank you, Raiki. Um, we didn't anticipate that one of us would be selected to be a spokesperson for our project today. And we have four people here, um, including the founder of the property himself. Um, and he's here as well. But what I would like to do is invite you, Lauren, to, since you did the video for Think of Sagrada, if you would give a two minute kind of overview from your experience of having done the video and you're a better spokesman for it than I am anyway. Okay, I will do my best. I'm um, <clears throat> just still getting over uh, COVID folks, so <clears throat> bear with me. Um, so Finca Sagrada is on, uh, I wanna say hmm, 107, 187 uh, hectares. Walter, you can correct me, in a sacred valley in Vilcabamba, Ecuador. Uh, Walter and Susan Davis Mora moved there and purchased the land in 2007 and have been very steadily over the years turning it into a biodynamic farm and a regenerative retreat center. They have a robust volunteer program. But one of the things that's really special about this land is um, through Susan's work. Um, so Walter's wife, Susan, is a legend, basically, in the social investment world. Uh, she has been named as the godmother of social investing. And um, through her work, she has brought in, um, they brought in a lot of indigenous uh, leaders to do retreats and workshops, and they, and they work with a lot of the local indigenous community. And when the Kogi came there, uh, they are the indigenous tribe from Colombia who were never conquered by the conquistadors. And so they still maintain their indigenous practices. Um, they recognized the site as a sacred site and have been working very deliberately 
with Walter and Susan to restore the site to its sacred nature. And so they come and they do regular retreats and they attract people from all over the world. Um, and so in addition to the sacred space, we are developing a, um, we want to build a larger retreat center, uh, more guest accommodations. They already have some now and, um, and the biodynamic farm has lots of produce. They work um, with the local community and Walter has been very um, uh, active with the seeds community for a couple of years now, I want to say. Um, he has been influential in spearheading uh, seeds rollouts through Vilcabamba. So the Vilcabamba bioregion already has received about 3 million seeds grants for various projects. Finca Sagrada has received about 770,000. And so I guess the bottom line is what, what they have created and what we are looking to continue to nurture is a um, multi-generational, multicultural, uh, biodynamic farm retreat center, learning center, spiritual center uh, that can uh, grow and evolve and, and really serve as a model for the entire bioregion in um, the upper Catamayo River watershed. Uh, they have connections with the university, with um, lots of local people, as I said, indigenous. Uh, so there's just this rich, <laughs> rich biodiversity and it's a lot to condense down into a couple of minutes. So um, I don't know if there's anything that I missed, Stephen, that is essential. Good here. Was, yeah, good. Okay. All right. I'll leave it there. Thank you, everyone. It's really exciting to be part of this community. Lauren, that is beautiful. And the, the sacred fire that you guys are stewarding there is just incredible. One. First time I heard that story and brought, anyway, beautiful. Does anyone have any questions for Lauren and Kinka Sagrada? Yeah, I do. I saw the video in, uh, in, in the video that you guys were exploring legal structures and I sent a message in the Discord channel directly to you offering support there. So I just wanted to ask what your current legal structure is and if there's any support that you need. Uh, well, I could answer that. Um, up to now, it's just been Susan and I who own everything. <clears throat> and any day now, we'll put the, the land into, well, we have an LLC already, and we'll put our land into that uh, any day now. And then, so we'll have shareholders. But the community will be run by an association, which is a, a legal entity here in Ecuador. Um, so it won't just be the shareholders, the whole community, because we'll be able to make decisions, although the shareholders do have the right to approve it. And uh, right now we're, we're um, also thinking about a land trust. Tucker has been helping us with that. It's a little complicated because we have Ecuadorian laws, uh, but we think in the long run, we'll be able to do that. So that, that's our, our legal setup. And we, are, we do plan to work with um, the Haifa DAO tools and get on boarded with that. Yeah, we're excited about that. One thing I would add is that I've been there, visited there, held some training sessions there with their local activists and supporters. There were 62 that registered, registered for training in that uh, community. There's very strong support for this. And uh, we interviewed 36 of them for more than an hour. Very impressed with the support that Susan and Walter have garnered over 15 years of working in that community. Awesome. Thank you, Sagrada team. You guys are incredible. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So next up, we've got Anders from Heartland Collective. Hey, uh, so excited to see all of your faces. And uh, my name is Anders. I'm from an amazing place called Heartland Collective. It was uh, started as a multi-generational project. So we have really family and tradition at the base. Um, I'm doing it with my mom. And it's really, really awesome to have a modern like elder on the land to help support um, everything that it is that we're doing. 
And uh, we've been at it for seven years. Um, we've built a ton. We've hosted over 400 volunteers here that have supported like at least 13,000 hours, which we've tracked in this like spreadsheet. So um, I'm looking for support here in our next growth stages uh, because we want to decentralize our total ownership. We're in the process of building a digital twin, launching a full on um, like um, uh, a full line of symbology that's designed to um, create a, um, a way for us to connect as humans in a way that just isn't quite being done through uh, connecting um, positive intentions with all these different symbols, connecting it to jewelry, connecting it to a way that we can communicate. Um, and what we're really excited about is creating these business models so that we can share them with other intentional communities so that they can utilize these business models to help them become more financially stable. Uh, right now we're a 26 acre property lakefront um, here in Northern California, but with the help of this group, um, we have the opportunity to purchase the next 210 acres segregated, pre-segregated into 10 lots. And we're in something called unincorporated uh, county, which means that we can incorporate into our own city and implement some of these different tools so that we can really um, activate this in California, which is unheard of um, in, a, in a lot of different ways. So uh, I submitted a one minute video made back in 2019 that you might have seen, but I'm going to click enter, enter right now. So I just created a new video, which outlines the 38 like most awesome things we've done in the last seven years over 20,000 hours of labor and everything and it kind of outlines where we've been what we've done and some of the things that we're doing in the future which we're super super excited to you know have you on board with so i'm anders heartland collective thanks for being here um, as not a facilitator, as a question maker, um, you've talked about being able, unincorporated and being able to set up your own city. Could you explore that a little bit more on what that actually means? So is that yeah, beyond I, the legal structure and now you can create entirely new legal structures and the state's okay with that or what? Well, I wear like 29,000 hats in everything that I'm doing right now. So like, I know that there is a process of town incorporation, but I'm looking for team members, advice, and people to help us like essentially do this so that we can figure out to, how to do it in the best way possible, because I think it's a pathway to, um, you know, um, sovereignty. Awesome. Um, any other questions for Anders? Yeah, I have a question for you, mate. Have you heard of spiritual ministries and the freedom they give in the US? Um, a little bit, yeah. Okay, that could be the pathway that you're looking for to set up an establishment that is with your own permits, your own licensing, your own regulation. It's also in unincorporated. So perhaps we can have a conversation and have a time about it. Yeah, I'd love to learn more. Thank you. Yeah, Anders, I have a quick question. Whereabouts in Northern California are you? I'm um, about three hours from the Bay, an hour from Sacramento, an hour from Nevada City. Well, what's the nearest, closest, you know, bigger town? One hour from Sacramento. Okay, because I'm I'm from California. I was born in San Francisco, so just trying to get an idea where you. Next time I'm down there, I want to come by. Yeah, please come. <laughs> awesome, thanks, Anders. Uh, Nicholas Latiera. Thank you, Ricky. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Nicholas, one of the founders of Latiera. Uh, you're seeing some of uh, the images of the land uh, back here. Um, the land is a, is a gorgeous piece of land, 430 acres in the Nicoya Peninsula, uh, close to Santa Teresa in Costa Rica. Um, it's, I would say, like the perfect land for a real estate project because we have road paved road access is five minutes from an airport um we have a mile of beach we have two rivers uh one of them ends into a sweet water lagoon on the beach the other one ends on a waterfall that pours directly into the ocean um it has about 170 acres of like almost flat or soft hills land that was used for pasture so we won't need to uh, cut many trees to start building so it's kind of like a dreamland and and i would say um what this turns La Tierra into is what I call a Trojan horse. Uh, this is a project that, you know, 
at the base, it's just like a no-brainer real estate development project that will be able to attract enough investment so we can build everything that we want to build. And then what we're going to do is put on top all the layers of incredible innovation and, and try to turn Latiera into a blueprint of what's possible. And, and I would say at the core of it, um, it's, um, it's art and myth creation uh, and we're clear at least for me like every project I work I've been working on uh, I realized that everything every revolution starts with a story and that we're at that point in time where we need to really create a new story to shift culture and and if we are able to do that then everything else changes you know once we all believe in the things that we are all talking about here then you know government follows companies follow and so that you're meant to be an immersive experience of sorts. We're going to have an incredible art installation like Burning Man, but permanent. We're going to have a lot of things around creating new mythologies. And it's going to be a place where you can come and experience for a few days these things that we're talking about. And then we're going to have a think tank and ways for you to take some of that home. And so turning it into really a, a place to, to like, as we call it, the home for the Renaissance place to just come and experience what's possible. Um, um, yeah, basically, we're in the process of uh, the land is about to be acquired, and uh, it's going to be a large development. I mean, overall, once the project is completed, I think it's going to be close to $100 million. So we're like making something really ambitious, um, but also like working on a lot of government systems and new ideas and, and, and all, all the, as I said, like all the layers that we're going to put on top to make these one of the most sustainable projects in the world and one of the most fascinating ones in terms of like experience design and ontological design. Um, yeah, that's that's where we are really excited. In a month or so, we'll be uh, done with our uh, master plan design that we've been working on for the last uh, nine months, and we'll be ready to share and put it out there also in case it has anything that is useful for anybody else. I, I definitely want to go visit there. <laughs> Sign me up. Um, any questions for mm -hmm. Nicolas and Latiera? Awesome, beautiful job. Um, Liam of Cohere. Hey guys, I'm definitely not prepared to do a pitch, um, but I'll give it my best shot. <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm representing Cohere. Uh, I think we're approaching this problem a little bit differently from a lot of projects here in a sense that like we're not focused on one piece of land or um, one intentional community or eco village, um, but we're really trying to build the infrastructure um, and the network to kind of connect all the different nodes. Um, and we're doing that in a few different ways. Um, our product right now is live, it, it being like a token that we launched on Ethereum and that representing uh, value in in the real estate asset, assets that we're holding. Um, hold on a second. My internet is crashing on me. Can you guys hear me still? Yeah. You've been coming oh, through perfectly. I'm coming through. Okay. So yeah, our token is on is live on Ethereum. It's, um, it's representing our real estate asset holdings, which at the moment we're still currently onboarding. Um, what we're looking for is fundraising opportunities and marketing and I mean, really just kind of to meet other projects in the space um, to network to collaborate to understand how we can better create this future vision and world that we all want to live in. Um, so yeah, um, that's kind of the, the basis of what we're what we're doing. Um, we're working with like web three technologies. Um, so all the assets are going to be hold held in cohere LLC. Um, so we're, we're leveraging the, the corporate model. Um, we don't see it as this like an, uh, e evil thing. Like it actually works in this like game A world still. So, um, and we're actually holding an event right now in Guatemala and Antigua um, to build out the, the DAO arm of our business. So if we think about that as like the software of, of the, the project as a whole and the, the land itself as the hardware. So we're, yeah, trying to um, use hive mind intelligence to kind of develop best practices, use what's already out there um, to to best kind of direct our efforts and our resources and and make this as like fair and equitable and inclusive as possible. Um, so we see as like land access and and um, 
uh, affordable housing is one of the biggest issues our generations are having to face today. So um, yeah, that's that's all happening right now. And I mean, I could go more and more in depth about um, all of this, but that's kind of just a brief overview of, of where we're at and um, the issues that we're trying to tackle. And I, I see kind of this alliance as a big opportunity to just bring this like, um, bird's eye view perspective and in, in, in kind of infrastructure and network perspective into like how we can all kind of work together, tie our different projects together, share share resources and, and best practices um, in the best way possible. So yeah, thanks for your time. And I'd love to hear more about each, each, each project because like the video obviously communicates one thing, but um, seeing your faces and, and hearing a little bit from each person uh, super helps. So um, yeah, thanks for your time. Thanks, Liam. Um, I have a question. Are, are you applying for a project or a, I guess a basket of projects? And just one project. I mean, just one project. I, I don't, I'm not clear on the different, differentiation between an alliance and a project, but I mean, we're a project that's trying to, I, I guess, create a basket of, of different projects. Um, I mean, we're, we're doing our own native constructions. Um, we have like a property in, in Guatemala right now and we're looking to onboard another one. Um, but we're also open to uh, different partnerships like where each each community can stay as, uh, as the um, kind of in charge of operations, but like just leveraging our membership pool and our, our, our resources to kind of help facilitate like the flow and movement of the network itself. Um, yeah, I don't feel, feel like I explained that part very well, but like the idea is like to give people the value of ownership and like the flexibility of renting and moving between locations um, and taking the equity with you. So whatever you put into it, whether that be financial capital or like sweat equity or whatever, is like you're able to bring that with you and it gives you access to different um, kind of tiers of, of living spaces um, in the different locations. And if I'm applying my map to it, I would say that you're an alliance organization. So what you're doing is actually helping this whole network of projects that we have forming come together and build the tools that help them interact with each other and do all of that. Um, so I'd actually say that you are an alliance organization, less of a particular project, which okay. is probably even better because then you're here at the center helping launch a bunch of projects, which is what it sounds like you're doing anyway. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, I would personally say that then. That I would say you're not a project, but you are part of the alliance, which is helping launch all the projects so that you're at the core and center of doing the tokenization, helping projects set up their token, et cetera. Right, yeah. Yeah, yeah I've only attended one of these calls before, so I, I wasn't this sure. This is all brand new and we're all like the, yeah. kind of the edge of the seats right now. So no, <laughs> no, no worries. Yeah. Thanks for the clarity. Yeah, and thanks for everything you're doing and it'll be awesome to keep doing this with you. Um, any other questions for Liam before we go on to Laura of Liminal Village, Christina of Lala Gardens, and that would be the last two. And then I'll do a summary of what's next and that'll probably be the rest of the time that we have. So uh, questions for Liam? Awesome. Thanks, Liam. Um, Laura. Well, I, I, do, I do have a quick question, just a clarification. If somebody is an alliance versus a project, is it true that we would not be submitting our votes? for that project or how does that work? Yes, we're not voting for alliance organizations yet right now. Um, that'll come next when we set up the Alliance DAO itself. Um, so right now we're kind of amorphous. If you're showing up and you're participating, we're just saying you're part of the Alliance. You know? um, soon we'll formalize that. Now the 12 projects that we're picking, those will each have their own basket and index. When we go to do crowdfunding, we'll say, hey, these are the 12 projects that are available. We'll have one kind of NFT, some people wanna make it or whatever. You have one token that you can buy that invests in all 12, right? So we're kind of basketing the 12 of each season together, if that makes sense. And then those 12 are going through a learning journey, designing their economic systems, their social systems, or et cetera. So we're learning this as we're doing it together as part of that 12. So that's what a, being part of the 12 projects means. And every season, the Alliance organizations, which could be, you know, a hundred organizations are then launching 12 new projects every season. So we don't yet have a cap on how many Alliance organizations to be part of it. And then if you're an Alliance organization, that is also an index. So when we go to, you know, institutions, they wanna invest in systemic change. 
we could say, hey, here's 100 organizations helping launch projects. These are the projects we've launched. And you can have one place to invest in all of these organizations. And that's the idea behind the alliance in a kind of a short order. Um, hopefully that makes sense. It'll be a little bit more clarity when I talk about next steps after this. Um, cool, so we'll go over to Laura of Liminal Village. Yeah, thank you. We find it pretty incredible to be here. And Roberto and I are representing Liminal Village, an ecotech uh, community hub in the center of Italy, where we strive to balance our contribution on the personal, local, and global level. And we are catalyzing uh, a network of regenerative hubs in the, in the center of Italy. There are currently four hubs that are part of the network within a, a radius of 10 kilometers. And we have one um, co-creation and co-working ecotech village and research center. We have a uh, crowdfunded communal space uh, of 24 families that is used as a kindergarten and um, an education center. And we have a small food cooperative that produces flour and chickpeas and pasta and olive oil and wine, all the good stuff from Italy. And we have recently purchased um, a former brick factory uh, which has more than 6,000 cubic uh, meters of building permits and it will be the next node in our network and we intend to build like a village here and part of the village will be um, a perinatal integral health co-working space for mothers and we will do this together with the local community and maybe roberto you want to add something Uh, yes, so this uh, 6,000 cubic meters of building permit that we have, we're going to um, we're gonna tokenize it on the blockchain. Um, and the idea is we're partnering with a 3D printer uh, company from Italy here, which actually can 3D print house with clay and the uh, local material. So the idea is that uh, um, we would use parts of the technology we already developed for food, that we're using both food uh, permaculture system and high-tech systems like FarmBot um, and water purification systems or replicable systems, open source systems that are then able to, to be used to make new nodes within the network. So the idea is like once we create the makerspace that is gonna make these nodes, we're gonna be able to expand the network. And the idea is to get it as close as possible because as the closer as you are, the more economic activity you can have. So the idea is instead of connecting all across the world, let's connect something that is then interdependent with each other and can provide for each other. Um, yeah, I think that's all. Check the video. <laughs> the video you guys made was incredible. Um, any questions for Laura of Roberto of Liminal Village? Yes, I have one question. Go for if it. He... Yes. Yeah, the, I saw that it's very interesting because I have the same vision uh, for this living uh, to do a regenerative hub. But also I saw like there is a, a, net, a net of, network of regenerative hub there in, around you. And I understand now because in the video, in the website, I found that is, the vision will be like international regenerative hubs network. Is I confused on that or? Actually, I, I, I fill up the forms that you have. Yes, so, you understand the question? Okay. Uh, the idea is to create a lot of um, uh, hubs, uh, as many as possible, because that's kind of like the, the other generative network. But it's not about the branding. It's just about what is the protocol which is able to connect all the hubs that are actually already existing out there to connect, to connect them. And that's something that we're uh, researching. The idea is that we are doing the local tied together network we're using permaculture zoning to actually say, okay, where is the hub? How often are we actually going into that hub? So for instance, in the kindergarten, we actually go there twice a day because we need to bring the, the kid and, and we'll pick her, pick her up. And that mm -hmm. actually creates like a, an opportunity of zone one with all the other families. That means that we can provide for each other. So the, the idea is that we are doing it local, but uh, we also will, this can be replicated anywhere. So it's, mm -hmm. it's like the models that we find, we can just share with others. Thank you. 
that really is interesting to, to know about this model, <laughs> to replicate here in this project and around here. Very interesting. Awesome. And that would be a good example of Liminal Village being a project that could be one of the 12, and that organization that's launching Liminal Village and wants to launch more to be an Alliance member that's helping other projects get started in the Alliance. So I, some of us probably represent both an Alliance member and a project that we're launching. Um, so Christina from La La Gardens. Excited to be here. Yeah, I think I might interestingly fit both categories, even though one of my taglines is all is in the small. La La Gardens is a one acre um, residential, but it's also a um, demonstration um, permaculture and um, natural farm, natural farming, which is incredibly effective in building and restoring soil back to a pristine condition. And so in a lot of ways, that's the hidden gem of Lala Gardens is that there's just, it's a garden that is in succession, has been in succession. So there's a lot of data potential. Um, but what brought me to, into the space of seeds and Web3 and integrating these different tools uh, in the beginning was basically being um, in a kind of a crisis, which I think a lot of homeowners, private own homeowners are. I identified earlier, I didn't wanna sell. I actually wanted to transfer to a community trust. So I've spent the whole last year um, in the Web3 space gathering tools and also creating modules that can be repeated, can be replicated um, in other small gardens and, and how to integrate a small garden within communities that already exist in modular fashions. So being that very hub that I've heard a lot of talk about here and being connected with um, other communities. We're actively being transferred to a community or to community owned trust right now. So that is happening. We're interested in using the DAO tools, uh, HIFA tools and definitely creating uh, our own token. And I've got an amazing NFT project that's about to launch um, utilizing a lot of the skills here on this in this room. <laughs> um, so yeah, I've just been doing a lot of work to make things modular, to make things repeatable. Um, so that we can help each other, you know, in a very, just here, you need that, here it is. Um, so I'm excited to share what I've been doing and to just add to the resource pool. Yeah, I think that's about covers it. I'm sure I could say more. <laughs> Thanks, Christina. Um, any questions for Christina on La La Gardens? Yeah, I think I missed where she's located. Oh yes, I'm in Fort Collins, Colorado, and I'm, I'm. The acre is interestingly situated just outside of town, so it's both urban and rural. So I've got this. So yeah, it's it's got this hyper local flow to it, but it's definitely res, you know, residential, but it's between urban and rural. Thanks, Christina. Ooh, uh, Nadim, you've got your hand up, and then we'll talk about next steps and close up. Thank, thank you so much, Rodoretti, and thank you all for showing up today and your beautiful, beautiful um, projects you're sharing with us all around the world. Thank you for my deepest heart. And um, yeah, we'll be uh, traveling next week to Costa Rica. I hope I can pass by, not Costa Rica, Guatemala. So I hope I can pass by to the um, brothers and sisters there. I'm uh, representing here the project Tabi Regenerativo and Alliance for um, Dear Wise Earth Living Labs. We have amazing technologies to share with you all. And um, yeah, the project itself, please look at the video. What I would love to share with you today is because I'm hearing and many are coming to me as well asking how can we support or other here are asking for support. So I would love to offer for us a space where we could voice out um, what we what needs do we have. And um, it's kind of a Kanban board and you can write down whatever your village or your project needs right now. And then you have a powerful seeds community behind you willing to support anytime and willing to go to that board. So um, I created a board just um, right now i would love to share a second with you and if you like it's the region civics alliance here and it's called the quests backlog and 
here you can write down your user story and then which project it is involved in. You can write down the importance, the urgency and the complexity and the definition of done. And people can show up and just pick one of these quests and support you any time, right? Um, so this is just an offering, you don't have to do it. And I'm ready um, as well to um, go there with, with the volunteers we have here in the circle and um, yes, support with things that we um, think we can do. Some of them are more complex, of course, some of them are more easy, but this could be a hub spot for us to support each other. Thank you so much for my deep sorry. Uh, thank you, Nadim. Yeah, and as we all set up our digital organizations, we can start issuing tokens to everyone who's contributing. So we can get rid of this notion of volunteering and we can start having contributing and you know co-earning and co-collaborating and all that fun stuff we're doing here. Um, you're incredible. Okay, so we've got just a few more minutes left today. So I'm just gonna try to rush through some next steps and honor the time boundary we always have. So let me go here. What we see in the back is all the art made by Regen Eric, and this is AI generated art. So he put in like Regen Village and he's collaborating with AI to make this art, it's kind of fun. So that's the art you see everywhere with the Regen Civic so far. Um, <clears throat> oh, okay, so these are the next steps. Is right after we pick the 12, so next week we'll have an understanding of who that 12 is. Then those 12 have an opportunity to remake their video if they want or not use their old one. We're gonna compile them together in one video and also explain a little bit more about what Region Civics Alliance is doing. So we have one artifact we can share around that talks about this movement, how we're building a new civilization. We're doing it 12 projects at a time. Here are the 12 different projects, you know, et cetera. So that's the kind of the next step is making that video. Um, we can make it from the 2030 perspective too, which I love. So we're like calling in the future world that we want and saying, this is how we're actively getting there, right? Um, so that's kind of the next major step there. Um, also, we'll be setting up all of our DAOs or dues. So some of the Alliance members represent different DAO tooling. So we have Haifa, um, we have DAO House, and I think we have Gardens, which are all on different blockchains. So each Alliance organization or project gets to choose whatever tooling they want to use. Um, as an Alliance, we're agnostic to particular tools. We're just offering the tools for projects. Um, for myself, representing Haifa, will be helping organizations set up their dues. Um, I'll be personally doing that. Um, for the intention of each DAO being a bioregional economic system. So really the intention is how do we coordinate to regenerate our planet and build this new civilization? So coming from that lens, we're building new economic systems locally. We don't know how to do it, um, which is what the 12 projects are about. We're exploring a diversity of approaches for building local, you know, culturally relevant economic systems, right? Um, so that'll be the next step is actually setting those up, issuing tokens um, and having that be ready. Then after that, we wanna make sure the legal structure is sound. Um, you've already heard today, there's a couple different legal structures being employed. That's perfect. We want a diversity of legal structures, but then they'll all still be connected in some way to that DAO. So if the DAO is you know, moving tokens or value, there's some guarantee from the legal structure and system that's being set up that those tokens mean something. Um, or not, some projects might not have any connection at all. And that's some more diversity we can explore. But that'll be the next step in our alliance is you know, exploring that together and setting up our legal structures. Um, at each one of these steps, we're gonna be doing sessions where we come together as projects. We talk about you know, best practices, alliances get to show up and you know, offer their understanding and learning and resources. And then we get to go through this process together. So we're learning from each other. Because again, we don't necessarily know how to do this. Um, then after the legal structure is set up, our DAOs are set up, then our crowd pooling begins. So this is when we talk about the 12 projects and we say, hey world, you know, are you interested in a regenerative civilization? Here's 12 projects you can support. You can either buy the tokens and contribute to one of the projects. And why we call it crowd pooling instead of just crowdfunding is because we can pool all forms of capital. So this is what the DAO is for. Is someone can show up and say, hey, I wanna fill a role or hey, I wanna give some land that I have, or I have a tractor or whatever. You have all sorts of forms of capital that you can show up and contribute to projects with. So that's another one of the really powerful reasons we're setting up a DAO, because then the token can reflect any form of contribution that comes to our project that we really need, right? Um, and then if we have that legal backing. So this could be really powerful is if some of the tokens are saying, hey, if you buy this token, it's backed by all of the value of the project so that people know who are buying that token, that there's some floor value and there's something behind it. 
And then if we have a basket of this, then we can have a basket of land-backed tokens that we can go to investors and institutions and the billions and trillions of dollars sitting on the sidelines right now wanting to invest into systemic change. And this is how we then approach them. So this is the, the steps we're going on here, right? Uh, so the crowd pooling will then take place. We're aiming for that to be, you know, early fall. Um, but again, this happens at whatever pace we can get there, right? So um, that's kind of the next major step. After the crowd pooling, so projects say, hey, we need $2 million, we need 10,000 hectares, we need these roles filled, whatever. Once those things are actually filled, then we have the region civics festival where people show up to the project. So this could be all the people who put their hand up and said, yes, we wanna actually show up to the festival and help plant the gardens, help plant the trees, help build the houses or whatever is being done for the project, right? So then we actually launched the region civics festivals later this year. So our, again, our timeline is that we still are doing this in fall. Um, fall for the Northern hemisphere, that will be spring for the Southern hemisphere. It's a nice time to be out helping with projects. So we're trying to get that before um, winter and summer. Cool, so then after the festivals are done, then the next step is then setting up that index, putting all the projects together, um, inviting the next 12 projects and continuing the cycle and keep moving on our way. So that's kind of a rough roadmap of what's ahead. Um, this is an emergent process. We're building it together. So we're coming together. We're going through this process. We might change it and tweak it as we learn and as we explore different ways of going about this. The main theme that we're showing up here to do is build that new civilization we know we need to build. Um, and we're just figuring it out together. So anyway, that's kind of a summary of what we're doing. So yeah, co-learn and co-create the thriving worlds. Yep. <laughs> There, there's my rushed way of trying to do that in seven minutes. I planned 15, so I talked really fast. <laughs> uh, with one minute left, is there any questions or thoughts or anything that anyone else who's been organizing and coordinating here wants to add um, to amend our journey or add to that? So complete open space for any thoughts, reflections. Uh, I'm curious if there's a timeline for when we're going to be getting together to discuss um, like legal structure and stuff of that nature. I know there's a lot of projects, uh, my, our, our project included and Finca Sagrada included that are going through this process right now. And there's a bit of urgency in the sense of getting together to kind of put the pieces of this puzzle together. And so I've been thinking about, you know, just kind of taking the lead to organize a, a meeting of that nature. And I'm wondering if you already had an idea of when that might be. No, it's open and we need 100 leaders in this movement. So if you're feeling inspired to lead a particular thing, use the Discord space, make an announcement, have the call. Uh, a lot of these things that we've talked about in each step has already been happening for the last you know, six months with a lot of projects. So that's been taking place in Discord. We've been having meetings. There's already been a lot of progress. Uh, so I would just suggest joining the Discord, diving into those threads that are already happening. If you want a session to exist, just make an announcement and say, hey, you know, I'm holding space at this time to talk about this. Who wants to show up? We'll do it ad hoc, but we'll also do it in a formalized way, one step at a time. So what I just described as the steps, we'll do that as a group as well. But really that should just be the culmination. Like we've already done a lot of the groundwork of understanding what we wanna do. And that session is more about sharing each of our different models. Cause that's what we'd really wanna record in each of the sessions is the 12 projects coming together. And then each of those projects sharing their model saying, okay, this is what we're doing for our legal structure and explaining what they've done. So then each video is each one of those steps of each project sharing their process. So really I would recommend, you know, diving into what you want it to be right now in the discord and using the open community that's there to, you know, discuss this and make it happen. Uh, my opinions. Uh, any thoughts or reflections on that topic before we keep going and Tucker, if you want to respond. Sounds great to me. I'll take the initiative on that. Um, anything else really vital before we close today? I know I've been talking really fast to try to squeeze it all in. Uh, yes, I did. Sorry. <laughs> oh, it's fine. Uh, Reiki, I just wondered if you are going to uh, include this, this evaluation link in all the Discord, different, different threads, or are you going to put it in a wiki for all the projects that are now signing up and that are not present? Or yep. how are we? The voting tool was shared with the last email um, announcing yeah. this call, and it was also shared in the Discord. Everybody's okay, and everybody's included in it. Exactly. And for the locking, uh, to not see any of the results, because right now it seems like everybody's on default. 
uh, as full control for the for the evaluation. So I'm just curious if, if maybe uh, it needs to be. I think I'm losing you. Did anyone catch the question? Um, whatever it is, ask it in the Discord. Um, I'm just really conscious of the time. I know, Jesu, you've got your hand up, so we'll do one more question before we close today. Um, and Alexandra, if you can hear us, just ask the question in the Discord. We'll try to answer it. Just Reggie, only to say hello. Are you listening to me? Yep, we can Reiki. hear you. We can hear you. <laughs> cool. Just to say hello, I didn't know that I needed to stand up hands up to present me, no, just to, to say hello. I am Jesu from Forest Living. Um, yeah, here is in east of Spain. Yes, and you're welcome. Thank you to all the movement. You also did a great video. So if you wanna learn more about Forest Living, please catch the video in the Discord and in the, the compilation. Um, thank you all so much for showing up for today. Uh, I know this was a whole lot trying to be delivered at once, and I think that's going to continue happening as we try to be mindful of everyone's time and do a whole lot all at once. So uh, I look forward to seeing you on the Discord. We'll have the same call next week, so I'll repeat it in the calendars and send out the invites so everyone has it for us to finalize the assessment. So take this week, watch those videos again if you want, watch this again if you'd like, and go ahead and make your votes. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Reiki, for holding the space. Amazing. Oh, my pleasure. Love you all. Amazing. <laughs> Breathing Bye -bye. Breath. Thank you, everybody. Love, light, and flow. Aloha. Reiki is so useful. You guys, too. Look forward to giving you a hug in person someday, all of you. <laughs> See you later, guys. Bye, y'all. I'm going to go play with my baby now.